Okay, so look at Dishonored 2 at 21.9 and specifically my thoughts on the game. It is frustrating that this has such horrendous performance because it's taking the limelight away from what is otherwise an absolutely phenomenal game. A patch for its performance issues should be coming this week, but as of recording this there is no such improvement. So yeah, you'll clearly see that in the footage. I'm running on the lowest settings still and dipping down to the 30s. It is so annoying. But anyway, I want to talk about my time with the game whilst ignoring these performance issues. And if you want to see my full 21x9 support breakdown of the game and a quick look at the performance at 3440x1440, then check out my video on that linked in the description or just head over to my channel. So as I said, I have had a fantastic time so far. The game has only developed upon what it provided in the first game, this time giving us even larger levels with an endless variety of ways to complete them, and you're always happening across information or secrets scattered in all areas of the map, which hugely promotes exploration. I refuse to continue to the next objective before I've explored every nook and cranny of my current area, which funnily enough means even after I find the fire fast secret route, I end up tracking back to see what I've missed by being clever and finding the better route. But what it means is there is huge replayability. Now right now, I'm undecided as to whether I want to kill everyone or be passive and knock them out, though if I'm honest I've killed like most people so far so it looks like I'm going to have a dark ending, but there are three very clear different playstyles, killing, knocking out and completely avoiding everyone. Each provides a whole replay of the game without feeling like you're doing the same thing. They each provide a different challenge, killing being the fastest route and allowing ultra slick moves as you progress undetected. Knocking guards out provides a humane way of finishing the game, however then you must deal with the bodies being left around. And finally, completing the game by avoiding every possible person is a very difficult task that will be loved by those wanting the most difficult experience. This time around as well, you get the choice of Corvo or Emily. Obviously, we will all play as Emily the first time as she's the new character, but having two characters with very different skills once again provides a huge replay value, and I'm dying to see how the game plays if you go with Corvo. But yeah, as Emily, you have bloody awesome skills, and each character has well thought out skill trees and abilities and clear development routes. The game also requires you to hunt and explore each level if you want to unlock the maximum number of improvements by scattering optional runes and bone charms widely around the world and in difficult positions forcing tactical decisions and exploration. It's a fantastic way of rewarding those who love to take their time, yet it doesn't hurt those who are looking to just power forward as fast as possible. Well, too badly. You will most certainly still find things difficult closer to the end if you continually miss the majority of runes. The story is compelling, I'm totally hooked, it's got intrigue, a world which I'm already invested in from the first game, and I'm curious to see how things have changed these past years as Emily has grown up. And yet the whole setting genuinely provides an experience I want to be a part of. The story isn't rushed, it's told neatly and acted out with skillful storytelling, and this is a very big tick for Arkane Studios. Other little touches, which seem insignificant, yet are unequivocally vital in making your experience better, are things like the quick save and quick load buttons in the menus, something every game that implements manual save files should have, with no exception, and the simple details in the menus, like the style of fonts and art within them, just add a personal touch. They keep in feeling with the game's world, and for the first time in a long time was something that made me notice the menus instead of just blankly racing through them. It's a funny thing, but it's very true. The little details mean a lot. Musically, the soundtrack is well designed. Again, it fleshes out the world. It helps you feel the world as well as just look at it. I don't quite know how to explain it, but yeah, you know when a game has great sound design and soundtracks, and this most certainly has been attended to here. 
graphically on ultra settings and yeah i know we can't exactly run ultra settings at the moment but if you do stick things on ultra you can see how beautiful the world can be the art style the clear effort and detail has been labored over to fill out each level is gorgeous and it just adds to the shame that performance is so bloody worse than crap it's sincerely disappointing because if you can't tell already the rest of the game is gold and once the performance issues are ironed out, I easily, with zero hesitation, advise you to pick this up. It will provide a fantastic escape with huge replayability and a story that you will love with characters you will love. It should be noted to those who are unaware, this is really 100% a stealth game. Yes, you can go all out and slash through everyone, but it's been designed with stealth as the primary method of approach. The stealth mechanics like hiding under tables and world design mean that shooting through will mean you have a paltry experience with the game that pales in comparison to if you take longer and silently work your way through. Remember, silence doesn't mean no violence. This game has plenty of brutal killing, but the aim is to make sure no one sees what you're doing. Anyway, as always, if you want to see my 21.9 support breakdown of the game, then check out my video on that linked in the description or just head over to my channel. I hope this gives you a better idea of what this game has to offer at 21.9. Give this video a like if you found it helpful and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21.9, head over to my channel. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, the links to my Patreon page are in the description. See you later. Uh. I'll never get used to Grand Guard personnel. Ship change. Why? They have to know something. You get another ship, another ship without pay, without pay. You're Hamilton? Why did they lock you up? You know something?